Good morning. Welcome to the Word and Journey stories that shape us and make us think. I'm Moses Bernabe. Uh, back with you this week. Uh, I missed our Tuesday evening hangout because life. But here I am Thursday morning because the story's got to come. Got to got to come back to the stories, and that's that's our discipline. Our most valuable discipline of seeking out and reading and reflecting on good stories. Uh, partly for the story's sake and partly for how the discipline shapes us. Um, I would like to be a person who reads <clears throat> and who thinks deeply about what I read and and how that affects me. And I'm reaching out to the other people in the world that might be interested in the same thing. Maybe there's only two or three of you, but y'all are my people. So thank, thanks, thanks for listening. So this week, I am reflecting on a novel by Paul Kings North called The Wake. I believe it is his first novel, uh, not his first writing by any means. Um, he's, if you look him up, he's a very uh, interesting uh, writer, journalist, fellow who has written lots of things in many contexts. Um, but uh, The Wake is his first novel. Uh, and so a brief, um, brief synopsis of, of the novel without uh, giving too many spoilers uh, So well. So it is book one of a trilogy, and I have not read the second two yet, although I, I definitely plan to. It, this this one definitely had a pretty good hook. Uh, but it is set in England, uh, 1066-ish era, following the invasion of William the Conqueror. And it is um, Middle Ages, English versus the French. And uh, it follows the story of Bookmaster of Holland, and he's a... Buckmaster of Holland. He's a landowner, and uh, corresponding with the, the the invasion, he watches his family get slaughtered, get killed uh, in in some increments. He loses his farm, he loses his village, he loses his community, and so then he. A lot of the story is his response to that, and there's grief, there's anger. There's the gathering of a band of uh, what in the called in the story green men. Essentially, um, <clears throat> he he pulls a Robin Hood or uh, or a Braveheart and and starts gathering uh, his guerrilla fighters, and they start uh, dreaming up ways that they can go after the French for for vengeance. And and so the so then the story is following that arc and that journey. Uh, and both what he does externally as well as, uh, and this is, uh, you, you know me, I like this thing, it's following his inner life, um, how he's um, how he's feeling through it all, how he's thinking, and uh, a lot of that. So, uh, ni ni nice story, <laughs> nice story. It's 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 fun. It's a it's a it was a good read. Um, a really significant uh, aspect of the story, uh, a selling point is the language. Uh, so this one uh, definitely wins huge points on the wordsmithing scale. Um, Paul King's North writ, uh, writ it, wrote it in what uh, they call a shadow tongue. It's a version of Old English. And so uh, so, so you open the page, uh, and I, I didn't know this going into it. And so I, this caught me a little bit off guard. But I, I open the page, and you know, like, so like the prologue paragraph is written. And it's, very, it's, it's visibly in in an old tongue, like words are spelled differently, you know, the vowels are used differently and everything. Uh, and and, if, and I thought, okay, cool, like opening poem, old language, whatevs. And then, and then I quickly figured out, oh wait, the whole book is this way. What, what am I reading? And to, to be honest, not knowing what it was, I, I almost put it down at that point because I was like, why do I have to, why should I have to work for this? Uh, uh, you know, me being a little bit of a lazy reader, um, I, I persisted and, and had the delightful experience of being able to learn how to read the language as written and as I was reading it. Uh, so credit to, to to Mr. Kings North and his writing and his wordsmithing for capturing and mastering <clears throat> this the, this shadow tongue that that he's written in and in such a way that the reader can pick it up not knowing it at all. And within with, within a chapter or two, like have mastered it. By the end of reading the book, it was really easy. It was like reading, uh, it's like 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 reading English because there's, I don't know it's humans are great. We 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 were pattern creatures, and so um, 
you know, we're able to learn languages, we're able to see patterns and and get familiar with things and kind of set myself. So I was able to like set myself in, you know, Paul King's North mode and, and read his shadow tongue. And it, and it was, it was, it was pretty easy by the end. And uh, so I, for that reason, if, if you pick it up and notice that you can't understand the words, uh, keep, keep, keep reading, you'll, they'll, they'll, they'll come clear. Um, pretty, pretty quick. So, and it's, and it's, and it's beautiful aside from the words being spelled differently, used differently, the character voice and the accents are also really, really pristine. And, and it's, um, it's this really beautifully written story, uh, really beautiful tongue, really beautiful words. And then, and then within that also, you know, it's set in England. And so it's set in this, these foresty areas. And so there's all of this imagery of the great trees, these crystalline lakes, uh, you know, these devastating, you know, fires consuming towns and houses, uh, these bloody corpses, these magnificent animals, these grungy green men in the forest and lots of really, really brilliant imagery. Uh, so, so for that reason, I'd say it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, if they ever make this into a movie, I, you know, hope that they make it cinematographic, cinematographically really stunning because it, it, it deserves that. So, <clears throat> um, so those are, so yes, world, world building, wordsmithing, definitely rate it pretty high. Uh, you know, plot. Um, so it's, it's, kind of a familiar sort of plot i mean it uh there's some aspects of it that kind of resemble like a robin hood sort of scenario where you know your your band of men in the forest and they're you know out to in, not quite rob the rich to feed the poor more like you know kill kill the rich to avenge the, de the dead sort of thing but but it's it, there's a little bit of that feel um there's a little bit it, it reminded me a little bit of braveheart uh in that it's here um here's this um, here's this generally peaceful sort of guy who seems like he kind of just wants to mind his own business. Uh, his family gets killed because of the invaders. And then he, he goes on this vengeance, uh, vengeance quest. And, uh, so, so there's a little bit of that flavor and it's, so it's, it's a little bit predictable in that sense. Um, what becomes really interesting, I think are, are the characters, the, the character of Buckmaster as you're getting into his head and, and into his pain and uh and into his his philosophy his religion and uh, and how that how that all inter intertwines together so so some of some of the some of the inner conflicts for him so he's he's a man of the land he's a farmer he's so it's not only there's the aspect of it's it's the english versus the french um but there's also the aspect of it's the old gods and the new gods um, Buckmaster, he's, I'm trying to think, I think, I think technically would have been pagan if I'm remembering my terms correctly. Uh, and that's not, not in the, at all in a disrespectful sense, just more, more, more technically talking about, you know, well, maybe pagan is not quite the right word, but he, he gives deference to, I believe it's the, the Norse gods. And, and so for him, there's this really close communion with nature. Uh, his his temple, his holy place, is going to this ancient lake that's really clear under which are ancient trees. It used to be a forest, it flooded. And now he can look down on this forest, and that's where he communes with the spirits, with the gods, and and goes. He goes there for for vision and for and for guidance. Um, but both his father and his sons uh, were uh, apparently uh, Christian or, or followers of of the Christ. And is very much presented as at this point in history um, a, a foreign Christ, a foreign a foreign God. And so, for for Buckmaster, the, his experience of uh, of Christianity is very much connected to his experience of France, and very much connected to his experience of there's just these invaders, there's these invaders, there's these outsiders, there's these outside influences that are coming in to take away everything that I know, everything thing that I hold dear, and so. So he starts off as this character who, yeah, he's he's got a wife, he's got sons, he's got a farm, he's got good standing in his village, and he he's presented as kind of this a little bit snarky but kind of wise guy who like kind of knows he's a wise guy and he kind of knows that people come to him for advice and he's he's kind of very caught up in like I know I told him to do this and he should have done that and he didn't listen to me but he really should have and uh, so. There, there, there's a little bit of like a a, a, smart, uh, a snarky snarky wisdom 
very, very homegrown, homespun wisdom to him. And it's, uh, you know, wh whimsical almost uh, at the beginning, be before everything happens. And what what that turns into, though, as the story goes on, is uh, that, that, that kind of snarky, whimsy, plus pain, plus loss, plus grief turns into a lot of perseverating and a lot of obsession and a lot of this preoccupation with 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 pain, anger, hatred, vengeance, uh, very much giving himself over to the dark side of the force. Um, yes, I'm mixing my epics there. Um, so some interesting tenets of this. Um, again, I'm reading this as you know, someone who loves books, but who's also a counselor in my day job. And in my day job, we work a lot with trauma we work a lot with grief we work a lot with loss and we work uh work a lot with just you know the the fallout of that how do how do people handle that and so uh, one of the things we 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 know we know this very very solidly is that isolation is bad isolation kills us and there is not really any healing that can happen on your own uh there's not really uh, like like the deep emotional spiritual relational healing there there's not really any of that to be found in isolation without people. And so it's why we, we need people. We need a, you know, a counselor, mentor, friend, pastor, priest, confessor, or we need a group, a tribe, a meeting, someone, some some group to, to, to be with. And so so with, with, with Buckmaster, there's there's a lot of isolation for him. Kind of, kind of not technically, he does have his band of men with him. And, and it's, it's, a, it's the small band. Um, and there's there's a togetherness, but but you get the sense that um, he's very much set himself up as this inspiring leader figure. He he believes that he's been given vision, vision been given calling from from his gods, and so he he leverages that to call some people to his cause and to kind of maintain a really authori authoritarian authoritarian uh, relationship with them, where they're like he's like no, I have. I have the sword. I have the vision. Like I, I know. I know what's up. And you know, you can follow me, or you can, you know, effing go over there. Uh, and, and so there's, there's that kind of relationship he has with his men. So in, in a sense, he he stays isolated. He's alone in that sense. He's he's alone emotionally, alone in his grief and in his pain. And it kind of starts to twist him up. Uh, the 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 story arc, and here's where it gets very different from the the Braveheart epic. Uh, and I'm, I'm very much thinking the Mel Gibson movie, um, just because that's what <laughs> that's what I grew up with. Uh, so in in the Braveheart epic, it's it's inspiring. Well, it's Mel Gibson made it to be an inspiring, heroic, cool thing. Where William Wallace he gathers this army, he inspires this movement. He's this heroic figure. He's driven by love for his country. You know, grief for his 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 deceased um i don't they, they did get married uh william wallace did get married in the movie uh yeah his you know william wallace he's grieving his his lost wife and he's he loves his country and so there's this sense of he's driven by this love of freedom and there's something really inspiring about that sort of character and so you see him just like ascend and develop um and and his progression is one that we might say wow that that's really really cool really amazing um buckmaster is different he he does have kind of that similar start of i've lost everything and now i'm going after my enemies um but for him it's a spiral for him it's very much uh i'm just like in my head and i'm living in my hatred i'm living in my anger um i'm living in mistrust so it's not just now i hate the french it's not just and now i hate the christ and it's not just well now i hate like all those like cowardly english who aren't fighting it's now it's like oh I, I hate those other english who are fighting the same fight but they're not fighting in my way or uh or anything and and because he has a couple options to like team up with some other guerrilla fighters or some other armies and he's just like full of scorn and and everything so he's a proud man he's he's proud he's hurting so he's alone and <clears throat> and in that you kind of see his his little revolution flop a little bit like he tries to gather people, he tries to go in this vision, and um, he never gets like more than a dozen people uh, to 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 come to his aid, and then uh, and then people die. Uh, I mean, he he starts losing his men, and he he can't really hold on to them. Um, so I don't know. I, as I'm thinking, okay, why 
why should one spend time with the story? And I would say, yes, it's it's worth your time. It's worth worth reading, worth, worth taking in. Um, what, what does one get out of the story? Um, so A, definitely the experience of <laughs> learning another language, which, which is really fun. Um, also, this really there's this really powerful depiction of um, what happens when you're when you're isolated and, and full of vengeance and and unresolved grief. There's this inner spiraling. There's this inner destruction. Uh, there's this inner darkness that goes with you to where you know as is depicted in the Buckmaster character, he's not able to heal anything, create anything. Not even not in in this installment anyway. Not even able to a actually affect the revenge that he wants. He's just sitting he's like sitting sitting in his grief sitting in his sense of self uh, uh and again d depending on how you interpret how he experiences his religion or his communion with the old gods you could almost say he's just like sitting in his delusions definitely sitting in his paranoia so so there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects of him that we might today flag as you know mental illness um maybe delusions definitely trauma uh, definitely grief and it's the kind of thing it's a, it's the kind of things that can find their healing in community in being able to tell your story and being able to 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 weep for it um but those processes would also take a surrendering and a letting go you know if that if those sorts of things would have taken place for 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 the buckmaster character it might have meant i give up my little band of green men and we go submit ourselves to someone else's leadership or it might have meant i um I allow people. I allow people in. I allow people to to help or to get close, or I allow other people to be right about something. You know, Bookmaster is a character who doesn't really care about um, people people's feelings. Um, he's very much just like, nope, you're you're with me. You're you're my ally. You're you're you, you speak true or you speak lies, and so you know he's very much in this black and white thinking sort of mode, uh, which ultimately costs him. Um, pretty much all of all of his men, and and all of his relationships, and all all of his prospects. Um, you know, he 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 survives the book, obviously, because there's two more books coming. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm intrigued. I would like to see where he goes or how he comes out of that. I'd like to see if that if this is his end, because uh, because it because it could be. I mean, he I mean, from if if book one's all we're looking at, I mean, we could call him just this tragic figure this tragic um bereft almost mentally ill character who didn't have the resources he needed didn't have the help he needed and also was not open to those even if they were were to have been there um and so you know we could see him as he hears this you know tragic figure who just you know kind of kind of dies in it um maybe there's hope for him maybe there's a maybe his character arc goes some different places that, that could be cool um you know i'm interested too to see uh, kind of how the author handles the the interaction of the cultures um you know the, again there's there's the english versus the french culture going on there's the the old pagan religion versus the the, the christian religion going on and um be be interested to see do those relationships change or 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 what happens there so all that i say i'd say it's uh it's 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 a good story it's a good exploration of of grief and of trauma and uh kind of in a sense kind of what not to do or kind of a here's a scenario to avoid if you have experienced grief and pain like don't isolate yourself and then go off on guerrilla warfare revolution uh be better to you know connect with people so all that is that yes like i like i've said several times and now i'm rambling but i like the story the wake by paul king's north it was fun to read the really interesting characters really really deep really complex and uh yeah I, I i think you might enjoy it if you if you uh wait through the first couple pages get a sense for the language um it's a good story so i will at some point read the other two and let you know what i think about them and that will be that otherwise thank you for hanging out with me today talking about the wake by paul kingsnorth a really great story definitely has some some thoughts that, that could be shaping us if you like this sort of discussion and reading good books and looking for their their impact on us uh please do uh follow the youtube channel follow the podcast 
like, rate, review, share the podcast around. Uh, come and join me at uh, patreon.com slash Moses Burnaby and join the community there. And I appreciate that very much. Thank you again for being here. And we'll be back next week with another story. <laughs>